Hi, this is Kerry with Multicopter Warehouse, and we're going to go over the DJI Zenmuse XT thermal imaging camera system. Now, some of the applications that you may see the thermal camera being used with are going to include search and rescue, precision agriculture, roof inspections, power line inspections, firefighting, substation inspections, cell phone tower inspections, security surveying, wildlife conservation. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of where people are going to use thermal imaging. A lot of inspection type work. Search and rescue is a definite obvious one. Uh, some others are just going to be uh, kind of out there. We have a customer using them it to monitor the behavior of tortoises. Uh, they can see the thermal image of the tortoises at night when they come out after their breeding and it's easier for them to count them. Farmers are using it to see their cattle and be able to get a more accurate count than using a daylight camera where sometimes the animals can blend in. Uh, utilities are looking at things to see if there's heat buildup, which can indicate problems. So there's a ton of different applications that are out there. So if you, if you have something really interesting, we'd love to hear about it. But also there's a lot of very common uses that are going to be out there right now. The camera is a FLIR camera. It is manufactured by FLIR. There's some basic specs on it here. It's available in two different formats, a 640 by 512, which is the high resolution, and a 336 by 256, which is considered the low resolution. Now, we're only going to be dealing with the 30 hertz version here at Multicopter Warehouse. That is the high speed version. There's a nine hertz, which we don't recommend the video is very choppy and that's only really if you're dealing with exporting these to other countries which we're not the camera here at 30 hertz must remain in the united states it cannot leave under any circumstances it does shoot both jpeg or tiff and does video in mp4 format the digital zoom is available in both of them and there's different lens options. And we're gonna go through some of those as we get through this presentation. There's two compatible airframes today. There's the Matrice 100 and the Inspire 1. They're both basically about the same size, the same power, same wind resistance, all that stuff, with the advantage of the Matrice 100 being that we can install a second battery tray and get longer flight times. Now, generally, we're going to be maxing out somewhere around 30 minutes on the Matrice and around 20 minutes on the Inspire. So if you need that extended flight time, then the Matrice is going to be the platform that you want to look at. If you just need, you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time, the Inspire one is going to be a little more affordable. Okay, some of the features, you can get an exact temperature reading for any point on the screen, just touch on the screen and you will get an instant readout of the current temperature. So this close up here shows that that particular point is 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So very cool for actually getting to know what's going on. Now in a future firmware update, the radiometric data will actually be stored in the images. So software like FLIR tools will allow you to go back after the fact and get those temperature readings, but that's not available on release here at the moment. A digital data enhancement, this is kind of an interesting feature that allows you to get more detail out of the images. So as you turn that up, the level of detail goes up. Now the downside of that, you'd be thinking, well, why not just always have it cranked up? Well, it depends on the scene. If you're doing like search and rescue in a very tall grassy area, the amount of kind of noise because the detail might be too high. So sometimes you want to turn it down, sometimes you want to turn it up. So it's really going to depend on what your particular application is as to where that setting is going to fit in uh, best for you. Active contrast control is going to provide some contrast adjustment dependent on the relative scene temperature. So if you uh, have it really low, the whole scene might be a little washed out, as you can see here. In neutral, it's uh, a little bit better. If we crank that threshold up a little bit, then we can often get a greater contrast 
based on the seam temperature. So again, this is one of those things that you're gonna to need to play with to see what works best in the environment that you're shooting at, and it may not be the same all the time based on conditions. So you may have a very warm day, a very cold day, and you're looking at for something that's the opposite or close, and so sometimes you may need to adjust the active contrast control. Smart scene optimization. Uh, usually you're gonna to wanna to set this uh, somewhere around 30% or so, and it's going to help define the, the scene itself. So as it says, it defines the percentage of the histogram that will be allotted a linear mapping. So that's a little uh, techno babble there for you, but as you can see from it being disabled to a 30% setting, we can actually see more detail of the scene and get some more information out of it. A little better definition of the hotspots. Isotherm is a really cool feature that allows you to locate things that are within a known temperature range. So like if we're looking for a human, we might wanna have a low temperature of around 90, a midpoint of 95, an upper point of 100. And if the camera detects that particular temperature range, it will highlight it with like little glowing ants type thing. So you can see in the two pictures here with without isotherm, everything just looks the same. And if you look closely, you might be able to spot the person there. In the bottom one, those particular temperature points are really popping out. So again, a, for search and rescue, if you're looking at livestock or wildlife and you know the body temperature of those particular animals, you can use that to highlight that and maybe uh, point out the animals that you're looking for and not show ones that you're not looking for. Let's say there's a bunch of deer and cattle on a ranch, but the temperature is different between them. If you know what those temperature ranges are, you can better highlight the particular animals that you're looking for. Digital zoom is built in. Now it is a digital zoom, it is not an optical zoom, therefore we're going to lose image quality as we zoom in. And on the 336 camera, we get digital zoom levels of two and four times. The 640 gives you two, four, and eight times. So here's a scene, the copter never moved, and we can see what the normal resolution is, the double zoom, four times zoom, and eight times zoom. So you can see we lose detail as we zoom in, but sometimes that can actually be a benefit if we just can't get too close and we really need to just see what two things are. In the eight time zoom, we can tell that there's two people there, we just don't have much in the way of detail on them because of that digital zoom. A region of interest is <clears throat> kind of a, an interesting feature that will help exclude the upper portion of the image, usually by blocking out part of the sky. So we can say how much of it that we want in there or how much we want to exclude, which can help keep the, the image being more appropriate to what we're looking for without getting blown out because you know maybe the sun is in the image. So again, one of those things that you're gonna to wanna to play with a little bit depending on the time of day that you're shooting and what it is that you're shooting. There's a bunch of different color palettes available. Uh, most common are gonna be white hot, black hot, rainbow, but there's a, a lot of different options here. And sometimes one is going to be more appropriate to what you're trying to do than another. If you are simply trying to find objects that stand out, then possibly white hot or black hot might work really well. If you're using um, the XT in a firefighting mission and you really need to see the heat differential between different parts of a building, then maybe rainbow or fusion or something else might be more appropriate. So again, a lot of control with the XT camera, a lot of features here that can help fine tune the camera for you to help it be more effective for your particular use. And what's great about all of these things is they can all be done on the fly with the copter in the air. So you don't have to bring the camera down, change settings, put it back up, bring it down, change settings. All this can be done while you're in the air. So if one type of palette isn't working right for you, just roll through them and see if one of the other ones works better. So that's one of the beauties of the X-T camera is that all that control is right at your fingertips in the DJI Go app so that you don't have to hook it up to a computer to change it like we had to 
on just a regular clear camera. So huge advantage in being able to change all this stuff on the fly. So we'll look at some of the different uh, applications that are going to be the most common. Roof and building inspection is going to be awesome so that you can see problem areas on a building very, very quickly. The XT camera will let you see heat leaks, moisture belt, uh, buildup, like failing HVAC components. Uh, that you can do because you, you may see that there's a lot of heat buildup inside of an HVAC unit and that will generate heat which is indicative of a mechanical failure like bearings going out. So you know that you may need to take a look or do maintenance on a particular HVAC unit simply by it being hotter than it should be. So that's going to help save time, improve efficiency, and improve safety by not having to put inspectors up on slanted roofs. Hey, we're here in Colorado. We have to deal with snow uh, a good portion of the year, and we don't want people having to get up there in the snow on a roof and potentially have a safety issue. So this is where aerial imaging, especially with thermal, can really be a huge benefit. Livestock monitoring, wildlife monitoring. These are great uses of the XT camera. You can definitely see the heat signatures much easier than with a daylight image. Uh, farmers and ranchers are using it to count cattle so that they know exactly how many they have there and where they are. If you see one that's way off where it shouldn't be, maybe you need to go investigate it and see if it's stuck, see if it's just not where it should be, and maybe even herd it back with a copter. Uh, I've heard that happening a couple times. So uh, good use of the XC camera in terms of livestock and wildlife management. Active fire deployment is definitely going to be a, a huge one for firefighters. They can get a fast, accurate analysis of a structure fire to be able to efficiently and safely deploy their firefighting assets. They can see if one part of the building is hotter than the other. They know how to attack it. They can look at a roof and see if it's safe to put firefighters on the roof as they might normally do in an operation, but if it's too hot in one area, they know that they might have a breakthrough there and need to readjust their strategy. So giving the firefighters the tools to see the fire, how it's spreading, where it's spreading, where it's at in real time is an absolute lifesaver for firefighters and makes them way more efficient. Agriculture, we're starting to see a lot of different uses in agriculture from uh, irrigation to and water distribution patterns. There's some ability to examine plant health. There's uh, all kinds of cool things that they're using based on the heat signatures of the plants and the ground and the water so that they can be more efficient in planning out how they're deploying their irrigation, how they're doing drainage how the plants are developing, a lot of really neat stuff going on with agri agriculture. Utility inspection is a big one because electrical and mechanical stresses result in excessive heat, which is exactly what a thermal camera is built for. So at a wind farm, for example, that you can just fly it very quickly and see the heat signatures of the turbines and see whether there's problematic equipment. Same with the, as we mentioned, the HVAC equipment. If there's a bunch of HVAC units on a building, you can just fly over very quickly and without having to sit there and inspect every single one of them, you can see the ones that are generating more heat than others. This can also be used on electrical lines, transformers, the connections between them, the isolators, all kinds of interesting things being done in electrical inspection because again, electrical resistance will result in excessive heat, which is very easy to spot with the XT camera. Law enforcement, obviously a huge, huge market for law enforcement because people in vehicles give off very distinctive heat signatures, making them very easy to spot. Uh, in this image here, we can, in the middle of the frame, we can see a person walking down the sidewalk. When this is in video, it's very, very clear that somebody is moving. It's very easy to, to spot them. And this has isotherm on for uh, the heat range of a car engine. And you can see which car right on the street has just been parked there. So great for surveillance, looking for fugitives, looking for victims, providing valuable information for tactical deployment. It's a lot of really interesting uses in the law enforcement uh, realm. 
Uh, the XT camera itself, as we mentioned, is available in two different resolutions, 336 and 640. The 336 is available with a 6.8 millimeter lens, which is going to be the widest angle, get you the widest view possible. But in order to kind of get close to something or, or really get more detail, you're going to have to get closer to it. As we move up, 9 millimeter is uh, going to be a little narrower. 13 is kind of like the standard that we're seeing in search and rescue operations, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, things like that where 19 millimeter being narrower and providing more of a zoom factor is gonna be best for things like inspection work because you don't have to get as close to the equipment in order to get a, a very, very good image. On the 640, it's just slightly different at 7.5 and then again, 9, 13, and 19. The pricing on the XT camera for the 336, regardless of which lens it is, is going to be just under six thousand dollars and the 640 camera is going to be just under ten thousand dollars so pretty simple pricing it doesn't matter which lens it is these are all going to be the 30 hertz version it's solely dependent on the resolution uh, the lenses cannot be changed so you get what you get and that's kind of what you have to have from that point forward now the Two different airframes again, we have the packages for them with the 336, 256 uh, coming in just under $9,000 with an Inspire One version 2.0, which will also include the X3 camera, the daylight camera, TV 47, and the standard uh, accessories with the 640 version being uh, just under 13,000. On the Matrice 100, it jumps up a little bit with the 336 coming in right at 10,000 and the 640 being around 13,600. And again, that's going to include the X3 camera with the mounting kit, the um, XT camera, the dual battery configuration and two TB47D batteries. So I hope this has been informative for you. If you have any questions, please give us a call at 303-552-2300 or info at multicopterwarehouse.com. We'll be happy to get you through the process of getting your XT camera and whichever aircraft if needed to go ahead and put that on. So again, this has been Kerry Garrison with Multicopter Warehouse. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.